Hi, I'm Chris Langray from Deep River Water Park. We're going to talk about fiberglassing a pipe today only because there's been situations where when you get a break on an assembly like the one that we're going to be looking at here, um, ultimately it's going to have to be fixed properly with new a new tee and completely fit. But I don't know about anybody else. We have a heck of a time keeping some of these 10 inch pieces on hand. I've got several 10 inch, we've got a 12, we've got some uh, some other fittings, some flanges, and I don't always have the stuff in stock. So when you end up with a break, if it's not catastrophic, what do you do in between the time that it takes to order this stuff? You just leave the whole thing down. Uh, I choose not to. We like to keep running as long as possible. One way to do that is well, there's a couple ways. You can either weld the PVC, which we've done in this instance before, and we got more settling out of the pipe and it re-cracked um, right along the weld, actually. Uh, so the next step here to get through a couple of days is going to be to fiberglass it. And once again, this is a temporary repair. This is not permanent, but it'll get us through a few days until we get the parts and we can rebuild this assembly and then through the night change it over. And uh, as far as the public's concerned, we will have never missed a beat. So that's what we're going to do. Um, this is by no means for style points or anything like that. We're just trying to get it functional and we can go through those steps. Okay. Alright, so now we, we know what we need to fix. We've seen what the problem is. So we need to get our materials together. You see that I'm wearing blue gloves. These are really nice to have. You do not want to get this stuff all over your hands. It's almost impossible to get off and it's disgusting. Um, sandpaper to rough up the area because we do want this to adhere. Once we've done that you will have created a lot of dust. I like to clean up with acetone. Uh, it gets everything nice and clean and prepped. You're also going to need the fiberglass resin which you can get at any store. I believe we've already mentioned that. You can get the liquid hardener for the resin. Um, these are all 3M products. It does not have to be a 3M product. It can be anything that all the stores tend to carry different brands. Mixing cups, very important. You may put several coats of resin on, so it's important to have multiple cups unless you get them completely cleaned out. Um, you're going to need more than one. The mixing of the hardener and the resin, something like a plastic knife, very good to have because you can just throw it away uh, and you will not be able to reuse it. A fiberglass mat. Now you can use a mat, which is what this is. You'll notice it does not have any kind of pattern, or you can use the fabric, which was actually woven. I prefer the mat on pipes for repairs because it's a little cheaper, and there's really no reason. you're not. It's not going to be anywhere anybody needs to see it, so it doesn't matter, and it's very strong once you get the resin on it. Um, you'll see how the, the process that I use, just because that's a process I use doesn't mean it's the only correct way to do it, but I do like to use paint brushes. Some people use actually roller pans and they will fill the roller pan with the resin and soak the fiberglass mat in there and then lay it on. That's acceptable as well. It just depends on what's going to work better in your particular situation. And then to cut the mat you're going to need some scissors. Um, these are the main things. What I do not have here that is also important to have, especially if you're going to be in an enclosed space, is some sort of breathing protection, a respirator. Um, because this does put off some pretty nasty fumes. Um, and then I'm wearing my sunglasses, but these are uh, safety lenses in these sunglasses, and you will need safety glasses. So now we can move on to the actual repair. All right, step one is going to be to kind of rough up the pipe a little bit because we want to give it a the fiberglass resin a tooth. I don't know if this is always necessary in an emergency situation like this, but. I like to make sure that we're going to be as good as possible here. You can use hand sandpaper. You can use uh, scrubbies, those green scrubbies. Anything just to put a little tooth in the where your fiberglass is.
pretty good. Okay, just cleaning the pipe up real good. Really some pre-paint's good for this. Uh, acetone, anything to wipe off all the dust and get it clean. You want it as clean as possible before you lay down resin and glass. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some resin now. And what we're gonna do is in three different parts because this stuff does set up. We try to mix it per the directions. If you're in a huge hurry, you can mix it a little hot, but you have very little time to work with it then. And by that I mean, you're going to be putting more hardener in uh, per ounce than it calls for. But we're going to follow the directions. And what that says is when you use this resin, for every ounce of resin you use, you're going to use 10 drops of this hardener. Okay? And you can get this at any home store. This isn't anything special. This is just a 3M uh, resin with a, just a quick little hardener here. This is the M MEKP hardener. And um, we'll have about... Oh, I don't know, 15 minutes to work with it, 10 minutes to work with it once we mix it. Uh, try to work it as fast as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up a 8 ounce batch of this. You see, I'm just kind of painting it on here. There's, uh, you can do this any number of ways. You can soak your glass mat in some fiberglass, or you can, you know, put it on dry, which is kind of what I prefer to do. And I paint it onto the pipe and put it on a little dry so you get some under it. And then I like to pour it on and smooth it on out. Get, I like to. I think I get a better coverage this way. This is the worst part of the crack here. I'm doing first. You can see the resin starting to. It's amazing how fast this stuff works. And just work it in. No great science to this. Just like it to to get to the point where the matting gets a little clear and you've got most of your bubbles out. There we go. So there is the first application. Not too shabby. I'm going to go ahead and put even more on it because why not? Once again, I'm not working on style points. I'm just trying to make sure this is all coated really well. And that looks pretty good to me. This bad boy. For that. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now, let's have some fun.
They do a lot of this uh, in building surfboards, Sasha. Just so you know. In case you uh, want to build a surfboard for your for your man. You can see here the repair is finished. We have covered everything in matte and resin, and I put the resin on very thick on this one, um, just because of the fact that it pulled away a good amount. I didn't like this pipe all that much. It won't leak. It should last us for at least a couple, three days. Um, it would probably last a lot more than that, but we do want to get it fixed properly and put a new piece in here. And because it's flanged, you know, once we get the parts, it won't be too hard to do. But we will be able to get going again with this this way. It will not leak. Um, I've had real good luck doing this. Uh, hopefully this video has helped you uh, think that maybe you can get by with something for a couple days. Because once again, even if this were to re refracture, something were to go on, this isn't going to cause any major problems. It's just you'd have to shut it off. Right now you don't. You can operate like this. It doesn't look the prettiest, but we don't care. We just wanted to get through and that's what we've done. So if you have uh, any other suggestions for videos or any topics you'd like to see covered, let us know. Um, otherwise, good luck to you.